Hey guys, so in this video I'm doing some digital fan art from the show The Legend of Korra. I actually made this for a print for a convention I was going to and that's why I'm doing it digitally. I do want to do more traditional works in my videos. Well, I will be doing them really, really soon. I've been doing a lot of digital lately because I was prepping stuff for the conventions. But have no fear, there will be much more Copic drawings and pencil drawings and paintings. I really, really, really want to get into painting on canvas this summer. Probably starting off with acrylics, maybe trying oils in the future, I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to that. So there could be some painting on canvas speed paints coming up. Anyway, so back to the subject of the drawing. I'm not going to talk about the show quite yet. I will later in the video and I'll give you a warning when I'm going to talk about it in case people who haven't seen it don't want spoilers. So I'll give you a warning when I do talk about it. So in this picture, I'm drawing Korra and Asami as a couple, which is why it's called Korra Asami, because some people ship Korra and Mako, some people ship Korra and Asami, some people ship Korra and Bolin. Like the possibilities are endless. You know how people are with their fandoms. They're always shipping different characters together. So this one's for all the Korra Asami shippers out there. Yes, they are both female. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So I'm working in Photoshop CS5. You can kind of see in the corner of the screen there. I was live streaming when I was filming this portion of the video. And so that was my little live stream setup on the side. And you'll notice it switches to a setup where there's nothing on the side. And then it'll switch back to me being in the corner with a webcam because I started live streaming again. So it's kind of all over the place because I worked on this drawing in different intervals. So the way I went about this is I did a sketch in Photoshop, which is unusual for me. I looked up pictures of couples on Google to get an idea of what kind of a pose I would want. I, I knew I wanted a pose like this. I had the idea in my mind and I just Googled different images to get some ideas of how I could pull it off. Then I did a pretty rough sketch in Photoshop and I didn't even clean it up that much when I went to do the line art, at least for me. I'm so used to really cleaning up my sketches before I ink because I'm so nervous that I'll screw things up. But because it was digital, I could easily erase. It's different than when you're drawing on paper. So yeah, it took a long time to get all the inking done and tweak things. I remember in that live stream, it was just like, can we get to the coloring already? <laughs> it was painful. And what I would actually like to do in the future is switch to a style of digital painting where I do a really rough sketch and then I go straight into blocking in color without doing line art because I just really like the look of that kind of art and it would be very painterly. A lot of stuff would be done on the same layer. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to see it as I go because right now I separate everything out into a layer so I can tweak the colors easily. Like the skin is on one layer and what I'll usually do is the flat color of the skin will be on one layer and then I'll do all the shading on a second layer and that just gives me the most control over things. So. I don't know, but I do want to switch to a style that's more, like less line art, more painterly, because the, doing the line art drives me insane. On paper, I don't mind it, but on the computer, the line art just drives me crazy. <laughs> I do have help though from my line stabilization tool. In the corner, it says it's Lazy Nazumi. It's actually Lazy Nazumi Pro. I just didn't really have room to write the whole name, but it's this tool that makes your lines smoother. And it also makes them come to a finer point instead of that messed up little bubble that Photoshop automatically does. And I guess I'll also mention the other things. I'm My tablet is a Cintiq 22HD and it says color wheel is the colorist wheel or coolerist. You can't see it right now, but I think you can see it later on when I don't have this live streaming set up. Anyway, that's the stuff I used. Where was I at? Oh yeah, kind of how I want to do more painterly style, yada yada. Anyway, so what else? Okay, there's gonna be a point at this video, it's around eight minutes and seven seconds-ish. Cora's skin switches. You'll notice she's shaded quite flat on the face. There's just not a whole lot of dimension and then bam, it switches to where she has a lot more definition and nicer shading on her face. And the reason for that is that I actually watched a tutorial by the artist Sakimi Chan she has some video tutorials available through her Patreon and available through this online store. And a while back, she released a coupon code to get her blending tutorial for free. So I downloaded that 
And I already knew how to blend, so I knew most of the stuff she was already talking about, but I still picked up a few tips. But what really helped me was at the end of her video, she did a demo where she painted a face and just seeing how she did her shadows and where she placed them, all that kind of stuff, it gave me so many ideas of how I could improve the shading on Cora's face. And so I went back and I was experimenting and I fixed it. I regret not recording it. I just wasn't thinking at the time, but it helped me a ton. So I'm really glad I did that because I'm not that experienced with digital painting. So I can't get things to quite look how I want normally. So that was really nice and that really helped me out. And what else was I going to mention about this? Da, da, da. Oh no, I had it in my brain and now I forget. There was the Sakini Chan thing. There was something else about the coloring or. Uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I also played around more with layer modes and brush modes. They're pretty much the same thing. So you can set a layer to multiply or you can set just your brush to multiply and other layer modes. But I usually set the layer so that I can change the opacity of the layer to control things. So for example, when I wanted to add extra bright highlights to the hair or to the clothes, where, everywhere really, I could create a new layer and I set it to color dodge and it would really, it would make some nice lighter areas. And that's something I've never done before. So it was just fun to experiment with new layer modes and new ideas and get something I quite liked. I mean, this picture is not perfect, but I do quite like how it turned out overall, and I just, I like the way I did the coloring, so, I don't know, it's pretty good. I think that's all I have to say. Oh yeah, one more thing. Sometimes you don't really realize your drawing is off until you start coloring it because you're able to see the shapes more clearly. Instead of just being black against white, you can actually see the shapes. So, I fixed a few things along the way. I, I, I think we're already past this point, but I fixed where Asami's forearm is. I made it a little wider. I fixed Cora's forearm. Just a few things like that. And I've gone back and I've changed the lips and I've changed the shape of the nose. Just changing things as I go as I colored it, basically. Okay, so I think that's all I'm going to say in terms of my process doing the artwork. It took many, many hours. I'm talking probably at least 16 hours. I'm not, this is just like a guess based on my live stream times and the time I spent not live streaming working on it. I'm really slow at digital art. Anyway, okay, we're going to start talking about the show now. So if you don't want spoilers, then mute the video now. So, but unmute it at the end. There's a funny clip at the end or funny slash devastating. So come back at the end after I show the final picture. Okay, talking about the show. So. I think I liked the original Avatar better, but it's really hard to say because they're so good in their own ways. But I think what I liked about the original Avatar is one, the sense of discovery, just discovering this world of bending and all that kind of thing. It's fun to go through that for the first time. Plus I like how it's set more in the past and so it's not as modern. It, I like the feel of it being more olden times, that kind of thing. And it's one long cohesive story whereas Legend of Korra is broken up into different sort of smaller stories, although there's one bigger picture going on. But oh, I still love them both. I like how the Legend of Korra is more mature, the characters are older, that kind of thing. And I would say, oh, what's my favorite season? I think I quite liked the first season. Again, it was that sense of discovery, you know, who's this girl, who's her friends, where are all the old characters at now? That was really fun. And I really, really liked Amon and the Equalists. And I think that was a really good plot line and everything. And to this day, Amon is still one of my favorite characters in the whole series. So I really, really liked that. And I also quite liked the third and fourth seasons. Uh, the Red Lotus was pretty dang cool. And it's it's cool when you have villains who you can you can understand where they're coming from in terms of what they're going for. Same with the Equalists. I mean, Amon was lying because he was a bender and all that. But it's cool when you can understand the motivations of villains. Okay, we're going to run out of time in this video. I need to speed this up. Anyway, so I really like the Red Lotus and everything that went down in the third season. And the finale was so dark. I just loved it. 
And then the fourth season, I really liked everything with Kuvira. She's one of those characters, like, I just really like villains, for one thing. <laughs> I thought she was so cool, even though she was a terrible person. I just loved it. And um, the finale, they just went all out on that. Season two is my least favorite, but I wouldn't say it's bad. I just didn't like it as much as the rest. I don't know. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the finale, because it was so dang cool. Oh, it was sad, because it's the last Avatar ever, like, we're not going to get any more Avatar TV series. Okay, I made some few jot, yeah, jot notes, so let's read them. Okay, the first thing I wrote is, Kuvira Badass. <laughs> she's just really cool, even though she's evil in a way. <laughs> Next thing I wrote was, Scary Mech Laser Sound. That giant mecha suit, the laser sound, it haunts me in my dreams. Not actually, but it sounds so freaky deaky, but I love it. And I really loved everything with Julie and Varric. Varric, again, one of my favorite characters. He's just so quirky and, like, I don't know. I just, who can not like Varric, you know? And then, oh my gosh, the moment with Hiroshi sacrificing himself so people can get into the giant mecha and Asami's face when she's being ejected from those hummingbird suits or whatever those hummingbird mecha things Oh, there's that shot. It's so It makes me tear up every time, man. I just... <sighs> and seeing Korra and Kuvira... Oh my god, we're running out of time. Korra and Kuvira battling is so freaking cool. And Mako with the lightning and it's all intense and his hair is flying. And then Korra saving Kuvira is like, what? And I loved it when Kuvira went all crazy with the big gun and she's like flying through the vines and everything. Oh god, it's so good. Um, yeah, so Korasami, I'm all for Korasami. There was no buildup for Mako and Korra. Like, things died in season two. It was just, there was no buildup, but there was some subtle Korasami buildup. They had to be subtle about it. This is a kid's TV show. They're not just going to be like, these girls love each other. You know, it had to be kind of subtle about it, or otherwise it probably wouldn't get put on air, which is such a shame. So anyway, I was freaking out of the finale when they went into the spirit portal together. It's like dying and screaming. I'm like, they actually did it! They actually did it! <laughs> so that is awesome. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the video. I had to kind of rush my little avatar speech, but um, yeah, we're getting towards the end of the video. I'll show you the final picture, and this print will be up in my online store for those who are wondering. By the way, the store opens June 15th. Stop texting me! How do I mute this phone quickly? It's new. I don't know how to use it. Hmm. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so picture's done, and now we're going to move on to the little bonus clip where something happened in my live stream. So, see you guys in my next video. I know what you mean. It, like, it drives me up the wall. I hate that. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Christian, can you come help me? 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 A bottle of wine just fell off the fridge. Dude, I never told you to entertain I killed somebody! <laughs> I killed Christian. Okay, so this is just kind of an overview of what the room looks like. It's really nice and bright and they have the doors open that lead outside. So it's actually pretty nice in here. Uh, so I have kitty hats. Got the stickers, the mini prints, the sketchbooks. Everything's really squished on here. There's not a whole lot of space. Um, I'm, I want to press buttons, so hopefully it's enough space. I mean, the button press is going to hang off the edge of the table, but if I can get rid of some of this stuff quickly, then I'll have more room. 